Hello, this is Dr. Michael Greger coming to you live from my treadmill as I do every month to answer any questions you may have. My, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. I think compile the most interesting, most groundbreaking, most practical findings and new videos and articles I upload every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free, there are no ads. No corporate sponsorships, particularly not commercial, not selling anything. Just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, actually, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition. Let us get to your questions. Rosario asks, um, are there any health advantages to going gluten-free despite not being gluten intolerant? No, in fact, well, it depends. What, I mean, if uh, going gluten-free gets rid of all sorts, you know, has you eating... Uh, not eating Wonder Bread, then that's great. But uh, shouldn't keep you away from whole grain, particularly intact whole grain, gluten-containing grains such as wheat, barley, and rye. So, um, uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, continue to eat um, uh, your gluten-containing grains and your non-gluten-containing whole grains. Uh, no benefit unless, of course, you have celiac disease or uh, wheat sensitivity or otherwise uh, gluten intolerant. Helen asks, so what's the best plant foods to eat or avoid to avoid to aid in the prevention of recurring yeast and vaginal yeast infections? I don't think I have any videos on that. Maybe something I never even looked into. I do have videos on bacterial vaginosis, though, a different type of bacterial infection with bacteria as opposed to yeast. Um, and if I remember correctly, it's cutting down saturated fat intake to decrease the pH um, uh, uh, to make your uh, vaginal environment more acidic. Um, with these lactic acid producing bacteria and that decreasing your risk of um, bad bacteria overgrowth. Uh, but uh, I don't know if I have anything on yeast um, per se. Some I can certainly look into in case there is something one can do about diet. Um, okay. Um, Helen again asked, is fortified nutrition yeast something to avoid? I heard a celebrity doctor state it would be cancer causing because of synthetic folic acid. You know, I actually raised that in a video um, as a theoretical concern a while back. Um, uh, I think the latest meta-analysis of, um, um, uh, if I'm correct, it was in 2013 that looked at all the randomized control trials that have been done with folic acid supplementation. And I don't think there was any difference in uh, cancer incidence. Um, and in fact, I mean, in terms of no increased cancer instance, I think there was even a decrease in melanoma incidence. Um, and so uh, I would not be concerned about, and these are people taking folic acid supplements, not just fortified folic acid, fortified food. So um, it does not appear like it's something we need to worry about. Just Mountain says, hello. Um, uh, thanks for your wonderful work. What's the best thing to do or not do for eye health, especially to decrease myopia and floaters? Myopia, unfortunately, um, nothing to do by nearsightedness um, uh, uh, in terms of treating the cause. Um, but floaters, floaters can be serious. Floaters can mean that you're actually bleeding inside your eyeball. You should go see an ophthalmologist, get the back of your eyes looked at, make sure you don't have a little retinal tear or something. Um, but in terms of eye health, in terms of retinal health, I have lots of um, videos talking about keeping your macula healthy, um, which is eating lots of macula pigment, lutein, zeaxanthin, found in dark green leafy vegetables. And I also talk about berries, I believe, for eye health. Um, just type in eye, and it should all pop up. Uh, do, rambutan, do rambutans make you fart? Um, rambutans, for anyone who doesn't know, are these triple like right off of Star Trek um, uh, fruits that look really cool but kind of bland inside. Um, no idea if they cause intestinal gas or not. Um, Andrea Mon um, asks, oh, uh, just saying that they're joining from Brazil. Welcome. Merlot 427 says, hello, could I talk about arginine? How it is semi essential. At low levels, possibly linked to anxiety, methionine may compete with it, etc. Thank you. Um, arginine uh, is amino acid bias. Um, if you're a preterm infant, you may have to get it into your diet and not make it yourself. But if you're not a preterm infant, um, don't worry about it. You can just get it through food like everybody else. Leanne asks, duh, where did Leanne go? Hold on. Oh, I had to click the more button and then it scrolled way down. Okay, no, here we go. Leanne asks, does the drying process of beans somehow 
do something important for health safety or is it just long-term storage? Is it safe to cook all kinds of beans fresh with eat? Uh, you can cook beans fresh. There's no reason to dry them first. Um, they, it's just indeed a storage thing, but you de But yeah, okay, yeah, cook fresh beans. In fact, um, yeah, yummy. But they do have to be cooked. You can't just eat them raw, like kidney beans can't just eat raw. So you get a tummy ache, a bad tummy ache. What's healthier, potatoes with skin or without? So, uh, purple sweet potatoes, regardless. That's the way you do it. Um, uh, but, um, uh, um, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, the, um, the uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, might as well eat them with skin, but better eat purple sweet potatoes, regardless. Um, just scrub them really well. Uh, Leanne also asked, thoughts about wheatgrass, juice or powder? Why don't people blend it and eat the fiber too? Blend wheatgrass? That's just like blending grass grass. You'd have to have a really good blender. Um, is it safe to consume during pregnancy? So I do have, I think I have one video on wheatgrass juice for ulcerative colitis, I believe. Uh, but I think that's the only study that exists in the medical literature on wheatgrass. So that's really all I can say about it. Um, Eric R, is this going? Uh, it is too early. Oh, holding a book. I don't know what Eric R is saying. YTMV Bergy B asks, is it unhealthy to consume plant-based protein powders? If your body doesn't absorb protein well from whole plants, how would you know your body wasn't absorbing protein well from whole plants? It's always better to eat whole foods rather than processed foods. Why eat protein in powdered form when you can get it? All the other wonderful things in the whole food form. So instead of getting pea protein powder, why not eat peas? And what they're talking about is yellow split peas, typically the source of uh, split pea powder. You make a wonderful, uh, oh, I don't know, kind of Indian dish like uh, um, with, um, with split yellow peas. Make soup, all sorts of yummy things. Do that instead. All right, Leanne asks, what is the role of dad's diet at insemination for the health of a new baby aside from fertility? Um, the role of a dad's diet at insemination for the health of the new baby. Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I've ever looked into that. Um, uh, nothing comes to mind. Um, Leanne asks, okay, Leanne is done with questions. Landon Mars asks, I just went plant-based four months ago. Dropped my total cholesterol from 270 to 186. Congratulations. Um, but triglycerides went up in any day. Why? Um, uh, well, um, some people are sensitive to a powdered, um, grain. So even whole grains, 100% whole grain wheat. Um, uh, is, uh, is physiologically unnatural. We were never meant to break open cell walls. Ideally, we would wall off our, pro, um, our nutrients and get, um, um, all of our protein, carbs, and fat, um, packed inside cell walls, which are made out of fiber, which actually slows the rate at which, um, foods are absorbed, lowers the glycemic index, activates something called the ileal break, provides all sorts of wonderful goodies for our friendly um, uh, flora. So it's not just about the fiber, which is containing the plant walls, plant cell walls, but actually surrounding. Uh, so fiber acts as a carrier to transport goodies like starch down to our gut flora. Um, and so, um, so but if you absorb calories too quickly, you can bump your triglycerides up. So I encourage you to move from whole grains to intact grains and see if that doesn't bring your triglycerides down. Of course, avoiding um, all refined carbs like um, uh, you know, uh, the white flour and sugar, etc. Okay. Frolics with danger asks, as a vegan with low iron, is a colonos colonoscopy and endoscopy necessary? Are there tests to consider? Um, absolutely. So if your doctor is considering a uh, colonoscopy, they're concerned about, I presume that you tested um, positive for occult blood. It's called guaiac positive. They, they found hidden blood. Um, and if that's the case, they really should find out what's going on and see if you have some sort of inflammation or, um, or worse. Um, and so um, I, I cannot believe that they're going to do a colonoscopy just because you had low iron, um, but that they must have suspected that you're bleeding in your digestive tract, in which case endoscopy makes a lot of sense. 
Ken DV asks, is there anything bad about supplementing uh, daily with two scoops of whey protein to reach my protein requirements? Two, why would anyone eat um, any kind of protein isolate? You know what the protein requirements are? 0.8 grams per healthy kilogram body weight. That's like, uh, so uh, Ken sounds like a, a man's name. 56 grams is the, um, like the uh, re recommended daily amounts. 56 grams. Um, you should be able to eat that, eat that easily with whole foods. In fact, the typical, um, uh, this is for men, uh, 19 through 50, the average uh, protein intake is uh, latest uh, national survey, 2016, was 106 grams, I believe. So that's almost twice what your protein requirements are. All right. Doug asks, good afternoon. Hello. Uh, considering I already follow the daily dozen. What should I do to prevent and stop allergic rhinitis? Um, allergic runny nose. I believe, I, have you looked on Nutrition Facts for um, rhinitis? I remember I have one video. Um, I think it was uh, allergic rhinitis in response to cedar. Um, so kind of pollen allergies. Um, but I forget what the video was about. So type in rhinitis and nutritionfacts.org and everything I know will pop up. Um... Egress, zero, zero, ass. Are there any specific foods and drinks that would help for the use of endometrial cancer um, before, during, or after hysterectomy surgery? Endometrial cancer. Um, uh, again, uh, nutritionfacts.org, type it in. Great website. You should check it out. Um, uh, nothing nothing uh, jumps to mind. I mean, there's some things in terms of preventing, but in terms of endometrial cancer survival, I'm not aware of any dietary um, uh, studies, unless it's already up. Not, not something I've come across. Um, uh, Marie asks, I've read conflicting advice. Is it dangerous or not to eat saturated fat? Uh, look no further than the Presidential Advisory from the American Heart Association. So um, frustrated with this internet nonsense that uh, questioning the role of saturated fat in disease that the American Heart Association put out this uh, special position paper, this presidential advisory saying, yes, saturated fat is bad for you, whether we're talking about coconut oil, whether it's talking about um, uh, meat, dairy, um, we need to decrease our saturated fat intake, if only to decrease the risk of the number one killer of men and women. Anyone who tells you otherwise um, is, uh, is, is, is going against the scientific consensus um, and is going against what indeed the science says. Um, AP asks if I get my carbs and fiber from vegetables and fruits and berries, nuts and seeds, why do I need to eat whole grains? I get my carbs and fiber. Well, I mean, so fiber, so uh, people have the sense that they're getting a lot of fruit from uh, fiber from fruit, but fiber are one of the least, um, uh, uh, one of the, 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 the least sources of fiber, whole plant foods, because, um, fruits are like 80% water by weight. Um, uh, and so, uh, that's why legumes, um, beans, split peas, chickpeas, um, and lentils and whole grains are the most concentrated sources of fiber because they're actually dry. Um, and so, uh, you get a lot uh, more fiber, but if you look at the fiber content of fruits, it's actually quite low, um, just because it's mostly water. Um, Thea dragon spirit. So that'd be one reason why you want to eat whole grains as a primary source of fiber. Thea dragon spirit asks, what are the best foods to improve digestion? What's the best way to improve digestion in general? Does exercise help? Um, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by improved digestion. So uh, I have videos on dyspepsia, which is kind of like upset stomach. Um, maybe that's what you mean by improving digestion. So I would type that in. Um, D-Y-S-P-E-P-S-I-A, I presume. Um, and hopefully that will help. Um, Raw Recovery says, does Manuka honey have healing benefits? Um, I'm sure someone selling you Manuka honey will suggest so, but the only thing, the only um, healing benefits I know from any kind of honey is for topical application for cold sores. Um, and I have a video about that as well. APS, this is uh, WRT oxalates and its effect on kidney stones is half to one cup of spinach leave a day too much. No. Uh, one half to one cup of spinach leaf is not too much a day in terms of oxalate content. If, however, you're eating multiple cups of greens a day, as everyone should, I would encourage you to diversify your greens and uh, not use the top three 
um, uh, um, oxalate containing greens, which is spinach, beet greens, and Swiss chard. Uh, but uh, so I would not do cups a day of any of those, but uh, definitely do cups a day of things like uh, arugula and collard greens and kale. Um, um, and uh, yeah, I recommend at least two servings of darkening leafy vegetables every day. Um, well, um, what's in my daily dozen? Uh, there's definitely, there's a cruciferous, um, uh, and uh, I do encourage people to eat dark green leafy vegetables. In addition to other vegetables, Shelby, Shelby asks, what health tips do you recommend for teenagers on a plant-based diet? Um, um, is there anything particular for teenagers on a plant-based diet? Um, uh, just uh, not to get, uh, um, uh, you know, obsessed with all the um, plant-based junk out there. Uh, teenagers have historically been uh, uh, not led the healthiest diet. And so, you know, a vegan teenager 20 years ago would be stuck eating fruits and vegetables, but now vegan teenagers can be eating vegan donuts and ice cream and all sorts of things, which should not be healthy, plant-based or not. Um, Adri asks, any advice for eczema? Um, uh, um, I do have some videos on eczema, um, uh, but I think they're mostly for children with eczema. Um, in terms of uh, treating eczema, it's mostly just, oh, and I have videos on topical application. I go through Vaseline versus other, like, uh, um, other creams for eczema versus steroids. Oh, yeah, so I do have some eczema videos. Type in eczema into nutrition.org and they should pop right up. Raw Recovery says, what's the best advice for IBS, IBD sufferers? Well, those are two different, very different conditions and a bunch of types of inflammatory bowel disease. In fact, there's different types of irritable bowel as well. Um, and so if you have ulcerative colitis, look up my ulcerative colitis videos. If you have Crohn's, look up Crohn's videos. Um, IBS, I'm going to have a whole other series of videos coming out looking at the FODMAP diets. Um, uh, yeah, so just um, those are all different disease entities, and you can um, uh, find all my videos about them on nutritionfacts.org. Uh, uh, Marie asks, should someone take more than the RDA omega-3s as a supplement if they suffer from dry eyes? Oh, I actually do have a video about dry eyes, and I believe the conclusion of the video is hydration. Drink more water. Seems kind of obvious, but uh, but it works, apparently. Okay. Um, Sloba, um, Slobodan asks, is it necessary to avoid beans during breastfeeding? God, no. Why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. Jeremy Rinfret asks, can't wait for the new book. Wonderful. July, not July, I wish. December 10th, I believe. Um, I'm really excited about it. It's going to be fantastic. Um, LGB says, what's the best way to repair telomeres? Oh, I have some old telomere videos talking about telomerase. Um, uh, the best way to repair your telomeres is to boost your enzyme of telomerase, which um, uh, does that uh, very thing. And you can do that by eating a healthy diet centered around whole plant foods. Alexis H. Ford Green says, hello, I have hydradenitis suppurativa. And can I have nutrition yeast or any yeast at all? Yes, indeed. Very smart. I have, I have two videos about that. Do I have any recommendations for a replacement for this cheesy flavor? Oh, that's a good question. What well, would be a good cheeseless, cheesy flavor that doesn't have nutritional yeast in it? That's a good question. You need to ask a chef. If you are a chef or someone who knows how to cook and has some uh, cheesy recommendations that don't involve nutrition yeast or cheese, um, uh, write a, re a response to um, Alexis. I wish I could help you. Alistair asks, any specific fruits and vegetables reduce lung cancer risk? And that smokers stopped smoking about four years ago um, and like to reduce lung cancer risk. Well, there, I do remember uh, doing a video about cruciferous vegetable intake and lung cancer survival. Um, so, uh, um, but I don't know if that was um, in terms, but in terms of prevention, um, I, yeah, I would have to just look up lung cancer and nutrition facts to see what pops up. Um, yeah, but uh, the most important thing you do is, as you already done, stop smoking and don't take back up the habit. Um, uh, but good for you for being able to stop. Net Geo Jugst. Oh wow, uh, long name Jugstgate asks. Um, it's uh, when will you publish your book on? Oh, longevity. 
Uh, yeah, uh, it'll be out uh, December 2022. That's my next book. I'll start January 2021. I'm on a three-year book cycle now. Um, Joel uh, um, asks, intermittent, intermittent fasting, is it bad? Is it good? Is it a miracle or a joke? You will find out tomorrow on my three-hour intermittent fasting uh, webinar. Um, and if you haven't heard about this, obviously you're not subscribed to my free monthly newsletter. Go to nutritionfacts.org uh, and press subscribe. It's too late to sign up for tomorrow. We have, I think, 3,000 people already um, on the webinar. I have another fasting webinar coming up uh, September 29th, I believe. Yeah, so that, um, you'll be able to sign up for that if you subscribe. Um, but what if you really want to see all my videos about intermittent fasting? Um, they should be compiled in a DVD out Monday. Um, uh, and so, and again, we'll... Um, announce that in the newsletter as well. So that's how you will find out and uh, everything you ever want to know about intermittent fasting. Jennifer Chrissy asks, can you reverse hypothyroidism with a plant-based diet? It depends on what the cause is of hypothyroidism, underactive thyroid gland. If um, we do know that people who eat uh, plant-based diets have um, uh, are more likely to have normal thyroid function, um, but what if you already have hypothyroidism in terms of the cause? If the cause is iodine deficiency, for example, getting enough iodine and your um, hormone and your uh, your body needs iodine to actually create the um, iodine-containing thyroid hormones. Um, and so then that's a simple fix. But if it's because of an autoimmune disease, which is uh, probably the most common cause, then um, uh, it's a matter of your uh, thyroid being scarred up. And although there's case reports of people um, reversing that, um, it's not something that's been put to the test in a more general manner. Um, it's still important to eat healthy um, for any kind of diet, but I would not expect, I would expect people with hypothyroidism due to autoimmune thyroiditis to be on um, thyroid replacement hormones for the rest of their life. Uh, um, Aaron asks, do whole food plant-based eaters have lower rates of appendicitis than meat eaters? That's interesting. Um, uh, yeah, so if you get people eating higher fiber diets, which, and fiber is only found in abundance in whole plant foods, do have lower rates of appendicitis. Um, uh, so yes, the answer is yes. Um, to, you know, I don't think I have a video about that, um, but I should do, uh, I should totally do that. That was one of the things that Burkett found, um, in addition to lower rates of diverticulitis, um, also lower rates of appendicitis among those who eat more fiber. Flyshacker asks, what do you say to someone who says they will continue to eat a bad diet while they're young because they have plenty of time to eat right and restore their health with a proper diet? Well, okay. I mean, yeah, the, you can see the rationale there. If um, uh, a plant diet is so powerful to be able to even reverse end-stage heart disease, why not eat whatever the heck you want? And then, oh, you have heart disease? Fine. Then get with the program and reverse your heart disease, open your arteries back up. The problem with that plan is the number one cause of death for men and women, actually particularly women, uh, with heart disease, something called start, sudden cardiac death, meaning um, you don't even know you have heart disease and then you're dead um, within um, a few hours of your first symptom. Um, so you feel some chest pain, you're like, boy, I should go to the doctor, but no, you're dead within a few hours, sudden cardiac death. Um, a little over 50% of men and women who die from heart disease. So you don't have a chance. I mean, no matter how much you uh, tell your ambulance driver to... Uh, to uh, you know, skip the fast food place on the way to the uh, emergency room, it's too late at that point. Um, so that's why announced prevention is way more than power to cure because there is no cure for dead. All right. Where are we? Um, okay, Eric asks, I cannot buy breakfast cereal at my local supermarket. Um, it seems to be a minefield of toxic sugar, but does anybody care? Um, well, there are some um, good cereals out there. You could just, of course, just make some oatmeal or something. But for example, Uncle Sam's is just uh, like uh, wheat smushed wheat berries with some flax seeds. Um, has a good five to one uh, fiber carb ratio, no added sugar, salt, anything like that. Um, Marie says it's dangerous to have a BMI of 17.9 if there are no symptoms. Um, well, so, uh, so, you know, typically we want a BMI kind of, so 18 to 25 is normal. The ideal um, BMI is probably 20 to 22. Um, uh, and so the question is, 
Uh, it's only dangerous if you are underweight because you have a disease, underweight because you have um, eating disorder, or um, if because you have so little uh, body fat, you lose your period, if you're of reproductive age, those kind of things. Um, but if not, um, then uh, you really, I mean, ideally you want to be in my of 2022. I mean, that's what the observational evidence suggests is the best. So, um, but uh, yeah, so um, yeah, what can I tell you? I would try to get it within that range, ideally. Um, APS, omega-3 omega to omega-6 ratio should be one to four, ideally one to one. Um, not necessarily, no. Uh, and so then trying to make a, a, a point that one should eat one kind of beans over another kind of beans, you have to realize there's so little fat in beans that it doesn't matter what the ratio is. Um, uh, and the reason we care about omega-6 and omega-3 a ratio is making those long-chain fatty acids. If you're getting them um, supplementing your diet directly, it doesn't matter. Um, and the most important thing is just avoiding junky omega-6 rich oils like cottonseed oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, um, uh, corn oil, which just um, will really throw your ratio off. Um, you should eat any kind of bean you want. See a dragon spirit asks, best ways to improve diet? Oh, we already did the digestion. Stefan asks, have I ever heard of Dr. Matthew Walker? I have not. He says the sleep is even more important than diet and exercise. Wow. Since if you don't sleep, then it's worse than both of those things. Well, if you don't eat, you're dead too. Um, yeah, no, I've not heard of Dr. Matthew Walker. Um, that would certainly surprise me, but not to uh, minimize the importance of getting enough sleep. I have a whole chapter of that on my new book coming out in December. Ashwagandha, any effects on hypothyroidism problems? I do not know. I have not yet looked into ashwagandha. Um, AJ Smith, for someone who is not going to the bathroom frequently, what is best to take? Um, uh, so I assume you're talking about constipation, in which case you need to drink lots of water and eat lots of fiber-rich foods. Um, um, uh, most uh, concentrated fibers, most concentrated in legumes, beans, smoothies, chickpeas, and lentils, also whole grains. All right. Um, okay, ginger beard. Almost a gingerbread. Ginger beard asks, would you consider an impossible burger to be a healthy indulgence for a plant-based diet? Have you ever had an impossible burger? Um, so I view um, Beyond Meat um, burgers and Impossible Burgers and, you know, Tofurky, all these uh, new um, uh, fangled uh, meat substitutes on the market to be a fantastic stepping stone um, towards a healthier diet. Uh, not everyone can go from cheeseburgers and milkshakes to, you know, kale and quinoa. Um, and so these offer a way to kind of have a, you know, similar taste and textures um, uh, from our youth to help people make that transition. Um, so I think they're fantastic, um, but I wouldn't want someone to get stuck there. I want people to continue to improve their diets um, and move towards whole plant foods that wouldn't have the added sodium. I mean, certainly they're better in terms of all cholesterol-free, typically lower saturated fat, but some have comparable sodium levels, et cetera, et cetera. So um, better, absolutely, um, but not the best. Swag Astronomer asks, any research on the health benefits of neurofeedback on mental health? It's a good question, not something I have looked into. Peaceful Abundance, it's a nice name, asks, any advice for dealing, healing with from interstitial, uh, interstitial cystitis? Good question. I don't know of any, I don't think I've ever done any videos on interstitial cystitis. Um, um, but it may just, it's not, not something I looked into. If you go to pubmed.gov, in fact, I think they just got rid of the gov. So pubmed.org, hopefully, will take you there. That's uh, the uh, National Library of Medicine's uh, database, the largest medical database in the world. Type in interstitial cystitis and diet if anything pops up, send it my way. And I, and if it's something that's interesting, groundbreaking, practical, I will do a video about it. All right, and we have one minute to go. Um, let me see if I can get to one or two more questions. Nadja BWF says, I have constant diarrhea every day. Um, uh, and uh, so what should I do? Well, so um, 15 days um, of uh, diarrhea, you qualify for 
um, the kind of definition of chronic diarrhea, in which case you need to go to a gastroenterologist and get figured out. Um, uh, it sounds like it says you had tests that are normal to have you been scoped, have you, I mean, there's, um, they, they can do, they can look for parasites, they can do um, biopsies, check for celiac, there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, and, uh, and if tests haven't shown anything, you just keep needing to get more tests until they can figure out what the cause, because you always want to treat the cause. You can always take antidiarrheals, but ideally you would treat the cause. And if they haven't found it yet, they should keep doing tests until they figure it out. And that takes us up to 1.30. Thank you so much, everybody. And I uh, look forward to our Q&As next month. And in fact, we'll hopefully Q&As in your very town. I'm doing 200 cities. And my speaking tour next year, hopefully I'm coming to a city near you. Bye.